In today's video, I'll be shedding light to the programs that I have available to migrate to Canada and I would also be explaining and giving you options you could do if you want to migrate to Canada. So if this is what you want, this is the right video. channel it's a girl at the dial and this is still your favorite channel on youtube these impressions if you're a returning subscriber thank you for returning back to my channel i hope i, I am able to keep you here and if you have a chance or per chance joining me for the first time on this channel today thank you for taking a chance on me and please press just click on the like Button. Yeah, that's one and then click on the subscribe button. I'm really glad to have you here and I appreciate it I do not take it for granted. Okay. Thank you so much. So today's video I'll be discussing today's video I'll be discussing about How to migrate to Canada. There are different ways in which you could use to migrate to Canada It depends on what your situation is and um, your ability to choose is going to depend on a lot of things so today i'm going to be addressing the different pathways for you the different programs available and i'm going to break it down in the simplest terms so you can know so you can know which in which you want to opt for okay so i hope you stay on this video please do not run away i have a lot of information to share okay so guys in canada there are different types there are two particular types of residents one is temporary residents and two is the perm permanent residents. So the permanent residents are the persons or the immigrants who intend to come stay in Canada permanently. They are actually relocating their whole life and everything about them to Canada to stay and to live in Canada. Now that's the permanent residents. Now the second is the temporary residents who are just here temporarily, just like the name says. They're here temporarily just to maybe visit or to study or even if they have a work permit that's still temporary if work permit to come and work for a particular period and go back to your own country that's still a temporary resident or a temporary residency and sometimes it might be to visit to work and study those are temporary permits you would have to have so having said that Today's video is going to be particularly about permanent residency because I know this is the option that a lot of people want to talk. This is what most people want to do. So today I'll be discussing more about the programs that are available in Canada under the permanent residence route. Okay. So today I would start with the express entry. Express entry is like the most common program that people use to come into Canada, especially if they're applying for a permanent residency. So when you hear express entry, what comes into your mind? The first thing that should come into your mind is that the express entry program allows the, uh, the government of Canada bring in immigrants who are skilled, skilled workers in a particular field, skilled trade, uh, sorry, skilled workers in a particular trade, skilled professionals yeah that's what the bring in that's who the bring in through the express entry so if you're a skilled professional you know you're good in a particular field you've worked for a particular time a period to call yourself a skilled worker you can be qualified to come into canada through the express entry program so if this is for you listen attentively there are also three programs under the express entry program number one is the federal skilled worker program number two is the federal skilled trade program and number three is the canadian experience class so i'm going to just explain in brief though it's self-explanatory i'm going to just explain in brief what these classes or what these programs do or what they mean so under the federal skilled workers program this is an opportunity for Canada to bring in professionals who are going to be brought in through their qualifications as professionals in their field and their knowledge of English and French. 
English or French. So if you fall under this category, this is what it simply means. You can, if you know you are a professional in your field and you've worked for a certain, like I said before, you've worked for a certain period of time and um, you know you are an expert already and everything, you could just apply under this program. It's still under the express entry. Federal Skilled Workers Program and um, you might be qualified. So Canada brings you in and they put you in the pool and they select you if you fit in into the qualifications. Of course, there are qualifications for this thing. It's not just rocket, it's not just magic. It doesn't happen magically because yeah, they still have to go through some, um, you still have to be eligible for some certain things before you would get to the level where they would choose you to come to Canada. But at least this qualifies you to apply for the program. So that's the first one. The second is the skilled, the Federal Skilled Trades Program. Now the Federal Skilled Traders Program is to allow traders, to, to allow certain persons who are skilled in a certain type of trade to come into Canada. And of course, like I said, they would also have to go through some eligibility, eligibility criteria that would allow them to qualify to come into Canada. And the last one, which is the Canadian Experience class, is for Canadians who... Did I say Canadians? No. It's for immigrants who already have Canadian experience and want to become permanent residents. So, people who already have the Canadian experience, they've worked in Canada, they know how the Canada, um, what's it called, the Can Canadian labor market works. This is the class they will come under for them to become permanent residents. So guys, apart from these three classes under the express entry, the, another another program that is available for immigrants is the provincial nominee program. This provincial, like, a, like the name says, provincial, allows provinces to choose persons who the few are qualified to come into their province to help them meet the demand of the labor market. So each province has programs, programs they already created for themselves to help themselves bring in immigrants into the country or into their own province to help them meet the demand of the labor market as boosting the economy of that province. So if you feel you cannot go through the federal skill, whatever, and federal this, you could go through the nominees. You could go through the provincial nominee route and see if you would qualify for that. So there's nothing bad in trying. All you have to do is try, apply if you fall under this category and see what will come out of it. So another way you could come into Canada is through sponsorship by your family members or by your relatives. Yes, sponsorship. So family sponsorship is another way of coming into Canada. But, wait a little, this is how it works. Through the family class sponsorship programs, program rather, people, oh, sorry, Canadian citizens or permanent residents in Canada can sponsor their spouse, by spouse I mean their husband or wife, to come into the to come into the country as permanent residents or can sponsor their children their dependents to come into the country as permanent residents but of course there's an age limit to sponsoring your child into Canada children that are lesser than 22 that is the law okay you can only sponsor a child that is lesser than 22 or 22 years old come into Canada through this class so the family sponsorship class is another way you could come into Canada if you are a child of someone who is already in Canada and is a permanent resident and you are lesser than 22 you are eligible to come into Canada through this class you will just be sponsored by your parents and voila you are in Canada okay so I know the question that will be coming into your mind at this point is can Someone who has a PR already or a citizen sponsor their parents or their guardians into Canada. Well, this option is not available at this time. I think there are other programs where you could actually try, but from what I have seen or what I have heard or what I have read and researched, I don't think it has been working. So this option is not something that might actually work for now. Maybe later things change all the time, so you never can tell. 
Another way of coming into Canada is through the LMIA program. And what's the LMIA? LMIA -E. okay. Labor Market Impact Assessment Program. So through this program, you would have to apply for a job in Canada get someone to employ you get an employer to employ you and then the employer is going to be to give you a job offer instead and the employer is going to be the one to do all the running around for you to come down to canada mostly yeah mostly all the running around for you to come into canada so the lmia assessment allows that the employer sorry the employer the employer Fills the form, applies for you, but of course he has to prove some certain things. He have he has to be able to prove that no one else in Canada can actually take that position you're coming to fill up. So that's a very hard one to prove, okay? Because yeah, there are so many people in Canada that can actually fill up jobs. So if it's going to be bringing a foreigner, which is you, into Canada then the company has to be able to prove that nobody else in canada can take that position that you are supposed to come and fill that is how the lmia assessment works this is another route you could use to come into canada so if you go online and you're able to find an employer who is willing to give you a job offer yeah the employer is going to help you get the permanent residency and that would be so cool right try it out if this is for you so at this point i'm going to have to tell you guys that every of these pathways or programs that i am mentioning in this video i would take them one after the other and i would discuss in length about them i would also share the i would also share how they work and the requirements the things you need the things you need to be able to apply for this program so you would not be lost. That is if you cannot do your research yourself. But I promise you on this pro on this channel, I'm going to be doing videos, taking one each after the other so that I can explain how to go about it for you. But today, today is just for me mentioning everything, giving you and letting you see the options that are available. So do not worry if you do not understand what I'm saying right now. I'm going to be taking the programs, the Express Entry, LMIA, sponsorship, um, family sponsorship and everything one after the other in separate videos because I can't just talk about, they are too cumbersome for me to talk about in one video. So another way of coming into Canada is through the Provincial Nominee Program. Like I said earlier, the provinces themselves chooses who and who comes into their province. They set out certain criteria and they choose who comes into their province to help them develop their provinces. So there isn't much difference between the provincial and the federal. federal. It's just that this time around, it's not federal deciding who comes into Canada. It's the provinces deciding who comes into their province. And there are a lot of provinces that have this program. I can bet you that. All you have to do, I would talk about it later in a separate video, but you don't have to wait for me to do that before you start researching. If this is what you really want to do, start researching which province in Canada has the PNP. So you can know whether to apply for that or not. So it is very important for me to mention that each province expects that if they bring you in through the provincial nominee program, you stay in that province. So your life and job and everything is going to be in that province because they brought you in to become permanent residents in that province. So that has to be mentioned. Number two is that they expect, most of them expect that you have a job offer from an, a Canadian employer. Um, before you make an application but I don't um, at some point I'm going to be discussing about that so I'll be able to shed more light on how that works so if you're a businessman with so much net worth and you feel you want to invest in a foreign country to boost more you know to get more uh, what's it called to get more money Canada might be the best place for you because there is a program that allows businessmen with high net worth 
to come into Canada to invest. And of course, you always know it is for the purpose of developing the Canadian economy. So if you're one of those people who has an establishment already back in their own country, you've got a good network and you've got business ideas and all that, and you want to expand, you want to broaden your horizon, Canada might be the best place for you to do that because there is a program that allows for that and that's the Canadian Business, Canadian Investor Immigration Program. So if this is for you, why not take the opportunity and do it right now. Apply and let's see what comes out of it. One good thing about this business class program is that it allows you to bring your family in once and for all and they're not coming with any out any house that they're coming as permanent residents why because your money already paid way for you so if you are this person who has your family and your relatives and everybody back in the home country and you have a good portfolio there's a program that allows you to bring in your children so you don't have to go through all the rigors of filing for this and filing for that and all that all of you are coming into the country at once to come and invest in Canada isn't that wonderful there is also the humanitarian and compassionate ground that allows those people who are already living in Canada but do not have legal status yet to be able to apply as permanent residents Yes, so you are in Canada, you are not yet a permanent resident uh, or a te you are not a temporary resident either and you made Canada your home, this is the right um, program to go for, the humanitarian and compassionate ground. It allows people who have already made Canada their base, people who have already made Canada their homes but are without legal status to be able to get their permanent residency. And of course, there are processes and requirements and all sorts of things one has to do to be able to qualify for these programs. Every single one of these programs has processes. So it's not just bam, 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 bam. No, it doesn't work that way. So it has, it has a process and you have to go through all that. You have to submit some certain documents and some you have to prove some certain things before you are allowed into the country as a permanent resident so another way to come into the country to come into canada is through refugee claims so if you feel you are being persecuted back in your own country or you feel you are not safe due to some certain issues you can file for refugee claim you can file a refugee claim in any port of entry in Canada. So if you fall under this category, maybe you're being prosecuted back in your, own in your own country, there's something going on with you that isn't just right, and you feel you can be protected under this program, then make a go for it immediately. One thing you should know though, is that you must be able to demonstrate that your country is really not safe for you and you cannot use economic grounds you can't say because then there's no food there's no water there's no drink there's no milk, there's no dad and this that's why you decided to come into canada or to apply as a refugee claimant no it has to be that you're being prosecuted and you are not safe something something somewhere is about to happen to you that might actually not make you comfortable to stay in that country then they might listen to you and they might give you permanent residency. So you might become a protected person. That's how it works. And the last but not the least, just like the PNP, the Provincial Nominee Program, is the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. The Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program allows immigrants or allows the provinces under the Atlantic in the Atlantic area of Canada to choose persons that can come into their province so that they can become permanent residents and help boost the economy and help boost um, and help boost the economy of those Atlantic provinces. The Atlantic provinces are Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. Prince Edward Island and some other islands I don't know about. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. So if you 
feel you can go through that the immigration sorry the atlantic immigration route that's also going to be more easier than going through the federal route because there are some provinces in canada that are less populated and they want people to come in to boost the economy to help the labor market to fill up the labor market so that everything can be going on well in that province so if this is something you could tell don't miss it so at this point this is the end of this video i have tried my best to say a thing or two about each program and like i said before before i'm going to make full videos on each one so it's gonna be each program for one video where i'll be going into the details about the express entry program family sponsorship the atlantic immigration business all of that all of those programs i talked about today i'm going to go into full details about them if you're going to wait for me to do that yes you should because i'm going to give you very 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 good details i'm going to tell you the requirements i'm going to tell you the things you need to prepare your mind for the tests that you need to take how you could go about taking those tests and coming out successfully the, expe the Canadian expectations and all of that. I'm going to go into details. So please watch the next videos on these things and don't miss out on any of my videos. You'll be doing the wrong thing if you miss out of my videos. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your stay here. If you like me, please click on the like button. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel. You can also comment in the comment section. Like I always say, if you have any complaints, if you have something you need to know about, please do not hesitate to put it in the comment section. I will see it and then I will reply to it. So another thing before I go is that all of these programs are things that you can do by yourself because i've had to answer someone who says he doesn't want to get he's been contacting agents to help him with the process of coming to canada and he doesn't want to get defrauded yeah things like this happen all the time and if you want to prevent such why not try to do things yourself first but if you're even going to engage the services of an agent why not follow up by making sure that you have the requisite knowledge so that the agent would not mislead you and you would not get defrauded. But the best thing to do, especially when applying for things like this, is to do things yourself. Fill these applications yourself. Information is online for you to be able to do these things yourself. Fill the applications online and you'll be able to get the required knowledge because your agent might not tell you everything and sometimes you might put in a lot of money that might not actually be needed so the best thing like i always say like i would keep saying is to feel things out to sell check this on the internet check those programs on the internet check to see if there are employers on the internet that are willing to employ you at this time just keep doing it you will definitely get there at some point so thank you so much for joining me like i said before subscribe subscribe click on the like button and put down your comments my name is the remains adetayo and this is this impressions bye for now see you in my next video please